guys, it's DC here and welcome to Level 1, Part 2, Thinking, Technology and Design. In a world where technology is encompassing every single part of our lives, the skill of thinking critically and solving problems can fall to the side. Technology helps us achieve a lot of different things but much more easily which is great but we need to control it and shape it to our own needs if you don't exercise these skills they will become fatigued and disappear but we need to be paramount if we are to thrive in a technological world and design the next big thing to be a successful technologist you need to be able to develop the knowledge and confidence to think critically in order to analyze the requirements of technology projects and then synergize this with problem solving abilities to creatively respond to design challenges in order to get the best outcome the knowledge that you will learn in this part will aid in your ability to critically analyze different information and design technologies that will eventually Eventually play a role in enriching and transforming society. So let's start off with critical information analysis in IT. The purpose for writing a critique is to evaluate somebody's work in order to increase your own understanding of it. A critical analysis is subjective writing though because it expresses your own opinion and analysis of this text means that you have broken it down to study each individual part. Writing a critical paper or report requires two steps which are critical reading and critical writing. There are five steps with analysing the document or report which are number one to identify the original author's purpose for having written that document, number two to analyze the structure of the document by identifying all main ideas. Number three, to then make an outline of these ideas as headings. Number four, to then write a description for each of those headings. And number five, to finally write a summary of the work you have analyzed. Now, how all of this relates to the IT or cybersecurity industry is usually within report writing. When you create a new document, you need to usually critically analyze previous documentation to be able to write a good design for whatever new systems you are implementing to their environment. Often you can't just sort of jump in and change a whole system without having previously read the documentation that already exists, which is where you're going to critically analyze that information and then change it into your own words and your own new documentation. This is quite a common practice, especially with those uh, IT architects out there who are designing whole new systems. What they usually do is they grab all of the previous documentation, read through the design, or at least how it's supposed to be designed according to that documentation, and then they rewrite it in their own way. That's essentially the job of an IT architect. But it's, it's not only limited to architects. As a network engineer, I've written tons of documentation before on new system designs, uh, firewall migrations, things like that. As a sysadmin, I've written new documentation based on previous documentation on different virtual machines and cloud service providers. And a lot of the time, actually, this documentation doesn't exist because at the time, no one had time to do it or, or whatever excuse was given. So you then have to sort of jump in and just write this information off the top of your head based on what information you have and then obviously you're critically analyzing an actual system and not a documentation and then writing it out in your own words, which is an entire design. Which brings me on to the second section of this part, which is designing technology. Now, inadequate or ineffective design can lead to solutions which are a poor fit for purpose and uh, they fail to meet the business objectives properly. It can result in projects that overrun their budget or time frame because of a lack of clarity between the business and the IT delivery teams. It can produce siloed solutions characterized by poor design and misinformed decisions. And due to that, no one has been governing the fit of the solution. A software system is typically developed to meet one specific challenge or one set of challenges. Over time, IT systems evolve organically, eventually becoming monoliths that are difficult to change and which are not aligned to the original design and function. This is a legacy that no modern organization wants or can actually really afford. Modern businesses need to take an enterprise view across their programs of work. 
They need to examine them to identify where a solution which has been developed for one program that may be of benefit to another. Their goal should be the reuse of existing assets rather than rebuilding combined with a focus on IT governance to ensure conformance. Now, a great example of this in the cybersecurity world uh, with legacy systems especially is that after time, they uh, become vulnerable. They originally were designed for one thing. It became a massive group of uh, different tasks that it's now running and probably was never really originally designed to do. And then with that becomes more vulnerabilities to different software or applications of that software to run different systems and it, it basically just allows all of these different holes into the software. Often you also see that uh, this piece of software, this legacy software will actually break over and over again. And you sometimes have to have like one guy almost dedicated in larger organizations especially to fix that one piece of legacy software constantly. Now obviously that's not ideal, especially if you're paying uh, like some help desk guy, $30,000 a year or whatever it is, to mainly look after that one piece of software. That's that's terrible design. But it it is something that happens quite commonly in different IT organizations and even non-IT organizations, just large enterprises where they have this one piece of software that was written for them. It had additional add-ons put in. It's now pretty vulnerable, falls over all the time. It's just not ideal, right? Okay, so over to the homework section of this video. I want you to browse to this webpage, which is pandadoc.com forward slash it hyphen project hyphen proposal hyphen template. I'll leave a, a link in the description as well. And I want you to go through this and write in your own IT project proposal. Now you can choose any sort of IT industry that you want. You can have it as like a pen testing project or maybe as a uh, infrastructure migration project or a cloud migration or new project completely. It's up to you what you write in here and uh, what sort of details you put into it. But uh, yeah, once you're finished with that, I want you to then submit it to the level one chat under the my library section of my discord server. Just uh, export it as a PDF once you're finished and I'll, I'll have a look and um, yeah, we can then go on to the next stage. Okay, well done everyone on completing part two of the basics of cybersecurity. If you did enjoy this video, please do give me a thumbs up, subscribe to stay up to date with when the next video is coming out and I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.